This is Vancouver, one of the richest cities in the world and consistently ranked as having one of the highest standards of living in the world. Most of the condo units you see are worth over a million dollars. Yet, in the middle of all this luxury is Canada's poorest neighborhood, right here, the downtown east side. This is a neighborhood with a higher rate of HIV infection than the most AIDS-stricken countries in Africa, where the majority of people are unemployed and home to over 10,000 intravenous drug addicts. The disparity is unbelievable. It's easy to look at the downtown east side and see it as an utter failure, a failure of those who let themselves reach such a state, as well as a failure of the city of millionaires who refuse to help their neighbors. That's how I saw it, until last week when I was lucky enough to visit the downtown east side and talk with Dan Small, one of the founders of the Portland Hotel Society. When Dan first started visiting the downtown east side in the 1980s, it was impossible to walk down the street without seeing multiple people injecting drugs. Vancouver's strict drug laws made it illegal to rent to a drug addict, and so addicts who couldn't be admitted into rehab were condemned to a life of homelessness. It was in these circumstances that Dan founded the Portland Hotel Society and established the first Portland Hotel in the early 90s, a large single-bedroom hotel in the heart of the downtown east side, which he converted into a residence for the homeless. Unlike other residences with strict rules for admission, eviction policies, monthly rent, and so on, the aim of the original Portland Hotel was simple. No rent, no red tape, simply a residence that got homeless off the street. When Dan started his first residence, the majority of those living in it had mental health problems, were HIV positive, and had a drug addiction. And this last part caused a huge controversy, but eventually led to the laws being changed about housing people with drug addictions. This residence was a huge undertaking in itself, yet the Portland Hotel Society was just beginning. In the next years, Dan and the Portland Hotel Society established a hospital, a bank, a dentist clinic, a local radio station, an art gallery for local artists, more residences, a coffee shop, and other businesses that employed people with drug addictions and the homeless, and probably other things that I'm forgetting. In an ordinary hospital, homeless people generally have a 10% rate of retention, meaning that if a homeless person goes in with an illness, there's a 10% chance that it will actually get treated. Uh, the reason for this is they generally don't have a health card or the, the waiting time is so long that they need to leave. In the Portland Hotel Society's hospital, which the health ministry gave Dan a million dollars to build, the retention rate for homeless people is 95%, so nearly 10 times better. Out of the different residences that they established, one was a purpose-built residence designed by one of Canada's most famous architects in the year 2000, Arthur Erickson, who also designed the Canadian Embassy in Washington. Homeless people generally can't use banks because they're either kicked out as soon as they walk in or they don't have the proper ID. But for their bank, people can use the ID that they're given from the dentist clinic that's also been set up by the Portland Hotel Society. So in the 10 years since it had begun, the Portland Hotel Society had accomplished all of these things. Yet there were still horrendous rates of AIDS infection in the community and hundreds of people dying from drug overdoses. And so the Portland Hotel Society proposed a solution based on what's called the four pillars, uh, which is prevention, treatment, law enforcement, and harm reduction. And one of the components of this was to establish a supervised injection facility. What this is is a place where people with drug addictions can go. They don't give you drugs. Um, you go in with your own drugs that you've purchased. You're given a clean needle so to prevent the spread of disease and you're watched by people who will see if you're overdosing, and if so, send you to the hospital. One of the people who supported this proposition was Larry Campbell, who had been an RCMP officer, worked for the drug squad, and then became BC's chief coroner. And he was then running for mayor. And he ran on the campaign that if he was elected, he would open the first supervised injection facility in North America, in the downtown east side. He did end up winning the race and becoming Vancouver's mayor, and he did open the first supervised injection facility, which Dan Small had actually already built covertly, despite threats from all kinds of people, including the DEA, who somehow thought that they could close insight uh, from the states, which is ridiculous. 
But I shouldn't be criticizing the states for how they reacted to Insight because Canada's government reacted just as badly. But they granted Insight a three-year trial period. And in that period, Insight became the most widely studied supervised injection facility in the world and probably the most heavily studied Canadian health program in all of the country's history. Studies were published in the most well-respected medical journals such as The Lancet, uh, dozens of studies, and they all confirmed that Insight did what it set out to do, which was to decrease the spread of infectious diseases such as HIV and to decrease the amount of drug overdoses. But on top of this, it was shown that Insight decreased the amount of public disturbances, so there was less crime in the area, and it actually decreased the amount of drug use. In the same building as Insight, the Portland Hotel established a detox center on the second floor and rehab on the third floor, and this actually became the most successful detox facility in the country. And yet, after this three-year trial, the Canadian government would not let Insight continue. They were going to shut it down. So Insight had to fight its way up through the courts, right up to the Supreme Court, all the while with four lawyers that were working for free, versus the Canadian government with the best and most highly paid lawyers in the country. Because all of the evidence was on the side of Insight, the Canadian government actually sent its own team to study Insight. These were not scientists like the ones who had already studied Insight. These were just people that the conservatives thought that they could rely on to provide a negative picture of Insight. However, even these people that they sent couldn't show Insight as being negative. Their studies really just confirmed what everybody else had already been saying. This didn't deter the government, who kept fighting Insight, but ended up losing with a unanimous decision for Insight, nine judges to zero at the Supreme Court of Canada. And so Insight was allowed to stay open. And to this day, there have been over two million injections at Insight, but not a single death from an overdose. The rationale behind Insight is that these people can't get any help for their problems if they're dead. And Insight has been successful at keeping these people alive. So why am I telling you this story if Insight isn't in jeopardy like it was a year ago? Well, Insight still faces huge opposition from a largely uninformed public who don't know what the place even is. A lot of people think that it's where you can go to get free drugs or something like this. And it still remains the only supervised injection facility in the continent. A lot of other cities would like to establish one, but there's too much opposition to it. But if we look at the United States' war on drugs and similar policies here in Canada, I think it's safe to say that it's been a complete disaster and a failure, leading to needless loss of life, millions in prison, and countless other problems. It's clear that there needs to be different solutions we should look to the Portland Hotel Society and the work that they've done to get a better idea of a new way forward. Thanks for watching this.